Welcome to uh, Tuesday News Day, sort of. Uh, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news that may or may not actually happen on a Tuesday. Look, I know the schedule has been absolutely destroyed lately, but promise me, we're getting back on track. I've kind of taken January to breathe a little bit, but now I'm ready to hit it hard with some amazing videos coming soon. And this week's been so crazy in terms of important things happening in the VR industry, I just had to get a Newsday video out this week, even if it was late. We've got one of the biggest updates ever for the entire Oculus platform, confirmed information on the next headset from Oculus, extreme leaks regarding Apple's new $3,000 VR headset, that and so much more, so let's just get right into the news. First off today, one of my favorite PC VR games from the past, Gorn, has finally received received a quest port. And it's pretty darn good actually. This is one of the first games I really got into back when I first got a VR headset, so it's kind of near and dear to me. And I definitely recommend it if you're into some hack and slash single player gladiator gameplay. I've had hours of fun in the game and I'm glad to see that people that have VR but don't have a PC can finally play the game now. Next up, we've got some pretty exciting metrics for the VR industry, but it's also a little scary, not gonna lie. I've always had this kind of funny inside joke that VR users on Steam are the one percenters, making fun of the one percenters of the motorcycle world because, well, for a few years now, VR users have made up one percent of all users on Steam. Well, those days are now behind us. It's time to take off your leather jackets because we're mainstream, boys. Okay, well, that, that's not so true. We're not that far yet. But for the first time ever, the percentage of Steam users that have VR has gone over 2%, sitting at a solid 2.13%, meaning that a According to Upload VR, more than 1 in 50 Steam users in January used a VR headset on their system. Now, coming from someone that has been preaching VR for years now, covering every little bit and trying to be the best VR pioneer possible, this small but important metric definitely makes me happy. But there's something to be a little wary about. I think we all know that Oculus is doing really well in the VR space right now, maybe a little too good. Holding near 100% of the standalone VR market and dominating the PC VR market on Steam, with more than 58% of all headsets connected being an Oculus headset. Now, this has a lot to do with the success of the Quest 2, which we'll get into in just a second. But it's also worth noting that the Quest 2 is now the second most used PC VR headset on Steam in general, which is kind of crazy. However, it makes sense. It's really the only option you have right now for VR if you're on a budget and it happens to be really good VR. And honestly, this is kind Kind of what we're waiting for, some sort of competition, like literally from anybody, which actually I've got some really exciting news on exactly that coming next week. So stay tuned for that. But Facebook's increasing market dominance is something that I think as VR enthusiasts, we should at least keep in the back of our mind. The thing is though, as much as total Facebook market dominance is a little or a lot scary, the VR industry is doing really well right now, which makes it kind of hard to hate, I guess. And this is where we'll finally talk about the Quest 3 leaks. In a 2020 quarter four earnings call, Mark Zuckerberg himself had a lot to directly say about VR, as virtual reality and the Quest 2 actually had a pretty decent impact in terms of revenue for Facebook, bringing non-advertising revenue up by 156%, mostly due to holiday Quest 2 sales. Another huge thing is the crazy amount of software being sold on the Quest Store, with more than 60 titles generating more than $1 million in revenue revenue, which is more than double the amount before the Quest 2 launch. Basically, the Quest and Quest 2 are the places to make money right now for developers, which may set a dangerous precedent in the future as high quality PC VR games get less and less attention. But at the same time, I'd rather there be a good place for developers to make money than for there not to be, which was kind of the case beforehand. And of course, there are rumors all over the place about the Quest 3 or whatever Facebook's next headset will be, which might might shock some people because you literally just bought a Quest 2 and you're already hearing about a Quest 3, but 
relax just a second. In that same quarter four earnings call, Marky Mark confirms that the next Oculus headset is currently being worked on. Quote, so we're continuing to work on new hardware as well. The new hardware will kind of fit the same platform. So the content that works on Quest 2 should be forward compatible. And so that way we're going to build one kind of larger install base around the virtual reality headsets that we have, end quote. And that's that. Zuckerberg confirmed that a new headset is being worked on and that Facebook is dedicated to making forward compatible ecosystems likely similar to phone applications that we have today. And I don't know why this is surprising people because this should surprise no one. This is the tech industry for Pete's sake. It moves fast and of course Facebook is working on their next headset. We know literally zero information on it other than the fact that it should be forwards and backwards compatible with current software and that it's being worked on. VR has been a pretty decent success for Facebook. So like I said, it's no surprise. What's more interesting to me though is the life cycle of these headsets. Is VR hardware for Facebook going to be a one year life cycle or two years? We really don't know. But having VR headsets coming out every single year from companies kind of makes me a little uneasy, I guess. But as the price goes down and quality goes up, maybe this will change. What should be way more important right now though are some huge updates that are coming for the Quest and Quest 2 right now. I am not joking when I say this is probably one of, if not the biggest things that has happened to the Quest and Quest 2's platform yet. Besides maybe link compatibility, and that's this new store that is coming to the Quest. So we all know the Oculus Quest store. It's historically been pretty small and hyper curated, although it's gotten better over the past few months. But if you really want to open up your game catalog on the Quest, you have to use something like SideQuest to sideload games that aren't approved by Oculus. And that's the whole problem. There are lots of Quest games and tons of Quest developers, but every game or application that goes on the Quest store has to be manually reviewed by someone at Facebook. And uh, not sure if you've noticed, but this has caused some major tension between developers and Facebook and normal consumers, and has also resulted in many games that should be on the store just being absent. Facebook went for a highly curated store experience and everyone just kind of had to suffer. Well, that sort of changes now. A few months ago, Facebook announced they were introducing a separate store for developers to post their games and it wouldn't require a manual review like we have to do now. And here it is now. This is the App Lab. Basically how it works is if you're a developer and you have a game you want to sell or post, you can do it through App Lab and people can now download or buy your game directly on the Quest Store, all without the quality review or getting denied. And it'll show up somewhat normally with reviews and everything and you can download it directly to your Quest like a normal game. But the interesting part is these games are completely hidden almost. If you want to download a game that's not officially reviewed by Facebook, you have to know the exact name because it just won't show up next to other apps that have been reviewed, which is kind of weird champ, not gonna lie. Basically relying on word of mouth rather than digital storefronts to sell games, but I guess it's better than nothing. And another interesting thing is that SideQuest supports the App Lab directly, allowing SideQuest product pages to redirect directly to App Lab store pages. And uh, I mean, it's not like SideQuest really had an option as to whether they would work with Oculus or not in this situation, but it's nice to see some integration at least. The more important part here is that this is a massively positive move for the entire Quest user base. Hundreds more games will be available in the coming months, and it's easy easier than ever to get games in people's hands and on people's faces. And I should be clear, this is not a perfect solution. It can still take up to five weeks to get a game published, and the whole system that Facebook has for promoting their games is really weird, and you still have to abide by some pretty strict guidelines. And Oculus still gets a pretty cut of the revenue. But it is a move in the right direction, and it's better than what we had before, and it's definitely one of the few things that Facebook has done that is is somewhat objectively pro-consumer-ish, sorta, with a grain of salt. <laughs> but uh, now it's time for a late meme 
Break. So I'm sure many of you have noticed that Meme Break has been kind of spotty lately, and we all love Meme Break here, so I feel like I gotta explain. You see this graph here from r slash VR memes? Well, it's sort of true, and it's killing Meme Break. <laughs> it's kind of sad. So this is why I'm calling out for a VR meme crusade. If you would like to be featured in a Tuesday Newsday for Meme Break, I have a place for you to submit your memeiest of VR memes, and honestly, I need your help if Meme Break is going to stay a thing. So go to r slash thrillseeker and submit funny things so I can put funny things here and we can all laugh together. Thank you. Now let's just get right back to the news. So I cover Apple stuff whenever I can here because let's be real, when Apple does enter the VR industry, it's going to make a splash whether you like it or not. But turns out recently a late stage Apple prototype VR headset has been rumored and verbally leaked with all the juicy details and it's expected that this headset may come pretty soon, as early as the beginning of next year, although it doesn't seem like Apple is really all that interested in selling a whole lot of them. Business Insider says, quote, the company could ship about 250,000 units in the first year of release, end quote, which in the grand scheme of VR as of now, it's not much. Although given some of the other details, it kind of makes sense why. Just to throw the gut punch out there right away, the thing I know everyone is going to talk about is the price. In typical Apple fashion, it's not cheap, and it's rumored that the headset that will cost around $3,000. The cost will more or less be justified by Apple lingo, I'm sure, but really it's because the headset supposedly has 12 tracking cameras, LiDAR functionality, true 8K displays, and will have standalone capability running on Apple Silicon. Now, if this is all true, I kinda get it, but uh, 3,000 bucks is nothing to scoff at. Really, there's not much more to the leak than that, but I definitely will be covering every step of the way because honestly, Apple entering the VR market is kind of exciting from a market and VR enthusiast standpoint. I want to see what they can do and how they envision virtual reality. And if 8K, LiDAR, and 12 tracking cameras is it, then let's see it. But now it's time for question of the week. From Thomas Gishler, seeing you have touched on a bit of both, would you rather a Sword Art Online or Ready Player One system in the future? Well, this one's kind of hard. I personally have some very unsubstantiated ideas about how VR will progress over the next century, and uh, yeah, in my opinion right now, we're likely going to progress down the Ready Player One path of VR, meaning peripherals like gloves, treadmills, haptic suits, and more will keep progressing and getting better and better. That is, until full dive or Neuralink or Ready Player 2 like technology overtakes traditional physically bound VR. Basically, why would you try to simulate touch when you could instead trick a dreamlike state brain into feeling touch? It's honestly a mixed bag and extremely exciting yet scary and it's all possible and I think both are in our future, but there's always an air of caution because the SAO style of VR is when society will really change and I believe it will be irreversibly. And that's question of the week. Don't forget to leave your own below, I may just answer yours next. And that was kind of a deep one. I might actually hit that back in a video. By the way, in case you've been wondering where my streams have been at on Twitch, I've been kind of relaxing a bit in January, but my Twitch stream will be back full force next week on schedule. And actually, if you're missing my Twitch stuff, you should check out my video on my second channel that has the entire 2020 recap, and it's pretty awesome. I love it. It's funny, I, I think at least. <laughs> So go check it out. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Mud King, Caution Ramen, I'm Naku, Zale, Burtrap, Atomaly, CPCJ79, KR, That Brock Guy, HCG Randon, Benji, Biz, Fusion Oak, and Very Evil Shadow. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.